with a potential TV deal coming for EC3 and Braun Strowman. This is Wrestling Hub. My name is John, and you're watching the Wrestling Report for February 17th. Before we get into the rest of the video, make sure you subscribe to Wrestling Hub and turn on all notifications to stay up to date with everything in the world of pro wrestling. Also, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Wrestling Hub Official, and also follow us on Twitter at Wrestling underscore Hub. Since 2015, women's wrestling in WWE has gone up a notch in quality as well as in recognition. Talking about her vision of WWE, Charlotte Flair told Jet Set Magazine that, I've never gone out there to have the best women's match on the show. I've always gone out there to have the best match of the show, period. I hope that other women see what we, the women's division of WWE, are doing and take the same stance with their chosen careers, regardless of what that may be. While she is the daughter of nature boy Ric Flair, Charlotte said she always wanted to carve carve out her own path. Extending my father's legacy while building my own has been paramount to my success. I never dreamed about being a sports entertainer when I was growing up. But when I made the decision in 2012, it changed my life. The ring is like home to me. Having the opportunity to go out every night and perform for an audience is the greatest feeling. Being a role model for that little girl or little boy sitting in the front row means the world to me. I truly get the best of both worlds. You have to embrace who you are and your roots and ultimately carve your own path. Speaking of those that played a role in the evolution of women's wrestling, AJ Lee joined the Women of Wrestling promotion to be a commentator. Talking to Freddie Prince Jr., Lee touched on what led her to joining the company. What inspired me to join WOW was the idea that it was women behind the scenes in every capacity, in front of the camera, in every aspect. To me, I love wrestling, and I never stopped loving wrestling. This was the perfect way to rejoin the world of wrestling, but also combined with what I'm doing now and what I have a passion for now. I'll be the executive producer alongside Jeannie and David McLean, which is mind-blowing. I'm going to talk to Jeannie on the phone. She really laid it out there what she wants this to be and what the vision is and also left a lot of space for what I want it to be and what I can bring to the table. I think that's the right way to start something. We know that people know what the product is or what it was before, but this is a new beast. We're really excited about that. It's a great group of women and somewhere along the way, I got inspired to say I'm also going to do color commentary. Women of Wrestling will make its debut in the fall of this year, so we'll have to wait and see what's next for AJ Lee here. Being the voice of major pro wrestling promotions over the years, Jim Ross has become a legend in the business for his commentary. Talking to Jay Mart and Ramon, Ross revealed his AEW deal is coming to an end soon. Despite this, he will be sticking around. AEW is in a really cool spot, especially a guy like me. My contract is up soon. I'm not looking to go anywhere, but nonetheless, I'm 70. I have to be realistic at some point in my crazy life. I haven't been. My late wife would say amen to that. He's a character. I'm loving what I'm doing. It's still fun for me. As long as you keep that element in the place of work, you're all right and doing good. Since NXT became NXT 2.0, one star that was a top name that has become lost in the shuffle is Tommaso Ciampa. Talking about Ciampa's upcoming match against Dolph Ziggler on Wrestling Observer Radio, WWE was criticized for their booking of the former NXT champion. Ciampa did a promo basically trying to say that, like, everybody calls me a minor leaguer and they look at this. And he's like basically saying that they are not minor leagues and he's there because he wants to be. And now he's going to have to lose to, like, the lowest ranked guy on the WWE roster, Dolph Ziggler who doesn't beat anybody. Champa made an appearance on main event last month, which led to speculation that he could be called up to the main roster soon. While Champa has previously stated that he has no interest in leaving NXT, we'll have to see what's to come. Following the shocking news of Cody and Brandy Rhodes leaving AEW, many are wondering where the American Nightmare will end up as fans seem to think he'll be making a WWE comeback. In the meantime, the Wrestling Observer would point out that Tony Khan and Cody will not be releasing any more statements regarding the departure of Rhodes. I've been in contact with Cody, you have too, but this is like the basic situation. And we haven't talked about this because I think that Tony and Cody pretty much had an agreement that, aside from their statement, that's the only public stuff that they're gonna say.
Back when it was first reported that Cody Rhodes was not under contract with AEW, there was a section of the audience that thought this could be a publicity stunt. On Busted Open Radio, Bully Ray gave his take on the situation, saying, It's all a work. Seriously, it's all a work, and Rhodes is coming back as a heel to destroy AEW. I said that there needs to be a heel that actually poses a threat to the entire company. With WWE looking to hold their Elimination Chamber event in Saudi Arabia, Dave Meltzer reported this in regards to plans for Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar. I was told twists and turns coming on this show, so I don't know what those would be. I know there was a push to do title versus title, which means Brock wins the Chamber and Roman beats Goldberg. I think most people are expecting that. For Brock to lose in the Chamber match, I mean, I don't know how you beat him, because again, it's like they haven't done a lot of interference in Chamber matches. I suppose you can do it this time, but it would have to take that. I don't see like someone scoring a fall on Brock Lesnar. It makes no sense at all to do that building up Mania because the whole idea of Mania has been to maximize Reigns and maximize Lesnar and make them the two biggest stars and protect them completely. Granted, Lesnar did lose to Bobby Lashley, but that was Roman's doing. It was very clear watching the match that that was the situation, but they could get the revenge back. There's a lot of different ways you can go, just the way that they choose. There's five, six, seven different ways. There's certainly going to be wrong ways, but I don't think they'll do those wrong ways. I wouldn't bet on it, because if you bet on their booking, you're going to be wrong more than you're right, because their booking is more negative than positive. A long-time announcer for WWE has been let go according to a recent report with it noted that as Hugo Savinovich has just reported exclusively for Lucha Libre Online, the legendary announcer in Spanish, Carlos Cabrera, has been fired from WWE after 29 years with the company. With Buddy Matthews rumored to be making his AEW debut, Meltzer would point out that the groundwork may have already been laid for him to join a faction. On the show tonight, they had Malachi Black and Brody King hint about a third guy, and I did hear some talk that this Buddy Matthews would be the third guy. I don't know that, but it's certainly something that's been talked about, so I would say that could be the case. He's a good wrestler. It's just a question on how you position him. I know people in WWE who absolutely, you would not believe how much they raved about him. Gabe Sapolsky was on Twitter going like when he was in 205 Live, he was like the best wrestler in the world. Best wrestler in the world is a pretty high standard in this world right now, but he was really great. He's a very talented guy. But he also has certain shortcomings that maybe being part of a group will alleviate some of them. I think it's a good pickup. I think you always want a guy with that talent level. The problem, of course, is they have so many people with so much talent, so much wrestling talent on that show and in that company, and you don't have time for all of them and the whole thing. But if you've got a good idea and you've got a good spot, if you're going to do a program where it's Pentagon, Phoenix, and Pack against Buddy Matthews, Malachi Black, and Brody King, I think it's a pretty damn good program. Former WWE star and one half of the Rockers, Barney Jannetty, has not been heard from since the 2nd of January, which led to someone on Facebook asking if anyone's heard from him. A friend that was mentioned in a previous post from Marty said this, Marty is back in Columbus and has some health issues. Keep him in your prayers. He would also say that Marty won't go to the hospital yet, and that he seems to be doing a little better today, and that he has swelling in his feet, back, and shoulders, with him needing a doctor to tell him what's going on. And of course, we wish Marty all the best during this time and hope he's able to make a full recovery. EC3's Control Year narrative looks to be getting bigger and better as United Festival Productions released a statement regarding future plans and a TV deal. For media release Thursday, February 17, 2022, EC3 former WWE megastar Adam Scher brought on Strowman to launch new wrestling company. TV deal announcement imminent. CYN Live, March 5th, Orlando, Florida, March 31st, Dallas, Texas, TV special. Now that I have your attention, here's the truth. The Control Your Narrative concept has manifested itself from an idea to a movement to a 
a live touring televised wrestling company. We, collectively as wrestlers, can no longer wait. We cannot wait on companies that answer only to shareholders. Companies where billionaires collect talent as toys. Companies that fire their entire roster for the mistakes their office made. Companies that are complacent in presentation. To create true change, you have to be bold. You have to bet on yourself. With CYN, talent bet on themselves. What has started as a self-produced concept focused on character development wrestling through a cinematic lens, CYN content was created by EC3 and his partner in April of 2020. The world was changing and everyone felt fear and anxiety. The best therapy is to create. The talent that has reached out wanting to create with us has been humbling. It's an honor to help them tell their story. One of these is former Braun Strowman Adam Scherer. I was so impressed with what CYN was creating that I told EC3 and JC how much it inspired, how I would like to create with them one day. The next day, I was released. Things happen for a reason. This is what's next. All talent featured in CYN asked to be a part of the project. On March 31st, CYN Dallas debut of Killer Cross takes place. If you want to control your narrative, all you have to do is knock. At CYN, there is no corporate hierarchy. There are no investors wanting to use the sport just to profit. There are no contracts, agendas. There is only passion to create. This company will be bigger than one person. I promise my undying effort to create a platform for wrestlers to do what they love and freedom they crave. For fans to have an unforgettable live experience with an engaging TV presentation. CYN is my purpose. And this was your Pro Wrestling News Update. I hope you're all having a great day. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you later.